This is the lock picking lawyer. The lock I have for you today is a two bar lock. It's a lock that's often seen in vending machines. I'm told it's used in gambling machines and also on gas pumps relatively often. By reputation, it's a very difficult lock to pick. And let me show you the, the front of this because it has a very odd configuration. It has what looks like eight pins arranged in two vertical rows of four. And each of those is engaged by a cut on this equally unusual pin or a key that goes inside and when we turn it the locking lug disengages. So rather than diving into this blind because I have no clue what we're dealing with, I am going to take this apart, try to figure out how the pieces interact and how it works, perhaps find some flaw I can take advantage of, and, and then we'll try to pick and gut it. So this will be a multi-part video. Stay tuned. The next part I will show you what's inside, and then part three will be a pick and gut. So we have the lock apart now, and there's an awful lot of little pieces, so let me try to explain how everything goes together, and I think Looking at this now, I have a pretty good method for approaching these locks. First, let's look at how it works. Those eight pins, well, I was calling them pins, but now that we take this apart, we can see there's no actual shear line. It's more just a solid rod that has a couple of false gates and one true gate. So I think these are more akin to sliders than actual, um, than actual pin tumblers that we would see in locks. But these pins each go into one of these slots in the lock housing. I'm just going to put it in right there with the spring. And then on top of that, we're only going to put one in. Well, let me show you. When you push down on this as the key engages, we cycle through the various false gates and true gates. And what happens is we need to line up all of the true gates with this little half moon shaped device on top of which goes a sidebar. So if we look at how this works, that's actually, there's two sides. So we have four sliders on one side that engage this half moon, which in turn engages the sidebar, and then a mirror image of that on the other side. So how do we pick this? Well, the obvious answer is we just push down on the pins or on the sliders, whatever we want to call them. But I think we can get a little bit of a better approach than that if we look at how everything fits together. First thing to note is tension. Now. If these two pieces were just on top of each other, this is the, the face plate of the lock, then if we put tension directly on that face plate, it would turn, it would crunch all those pins together, and we'd probably seize things up. But the lock maker did us a bit of a favor by, frankly, making the sidebars too long. And so what happens is when we put tension on the face plate, we put tension on the sidebars and the rotational energy goes right back to the lock body. So they did us a big favor. There's really no reason I can see why the sidebar needs to extend into the faceplate, but they did it anyway and I'm thankful for it. Now, the real crux of this lock is how we differentiate between the true gates and the false gates. <coughs> And I think we can do that because if we're looking at this, frankly, these true gates are drilled or are milled just a little bit too deep. And what happens is when we engage in a false gate, the half moon rides along that false gate. And if we're putting enough tension on it, it will seize up. It will completely seize up. There will be no movement at all. Now, if it's in a true gate, that true gate is so much bigger that we actually have some room for the pin to move. So 
we can differentiate between a slider in the true gate and the false gate by any movement that there is in the pin. Um, so we know that if the pin is seized up, that it's either in a false gate or a no gate at all. And if there's a tiny bit of travel um, under spring tension, then we're most likely in the true gate. Now, if this works, that will be very good for us because this lock is child's play if you can easily differentiate between false gates and true gates. So what I'm going to do is put this lock back together, put it in the vise, start the camera up again, and we'll see if we can put these, uh, these lessons to good use. Okay, I've got the lock back together. It is thankfully still working. <laughs> We're going to try to put our lessons to good use. This is actually the second time I am filming the pick and gut of this, but the first time I blocked the camera so much that I figured I'd do it again just so, uh, so you didn't watch my hand most of the time. For the sake of this video, we're gonna number the pins one, two, three, four, and then five through eight on the right side. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get started. Find our first goal will be to get every pin into a gate, not necessarily the true gate. And then after that, we'll go through and try to get each of them into the, the true gate. But for now, we're not going to try to differentiate between the two. Okay. Okay. I think I have most everything into A gate. Right now, we're looking for the really hard binding pins. Okay, here's one. Okay, I think I got him into the true gate now. Here's another one, got him into the true gate. I think I moved him from one gate to another where he's moving and a little springy, so that's good. Okay, I moved, I guess that's number six down a gate. And number five, number seven now, seven is Height. Clearly in a false gate. Okay, I think I've got him in a true gate now. Going to keep searching around. Okay, four is tight. Got him in, down one gate into what feels like a true gate. Okay, same for one. Just got him down into a true gate. Hmm. Two might be. I'm going to leave him where he is for now. Okay. I guess that's six. <clears throat> six is it's a little bit of movement. I'm going to leave him where he is for now. Oh, there we go. Got it open. Okay. Let's, uh, let's take him apart and... I will show you that all of the, the pieces are still inside. Okay, so I didn't have to use a hammer while gutting. I did not put the spring pin in. Instead, I had a, a solid pin, the right size, and I can just pull him out. Makes gutting a little easier. Okay, and let's see, pulling him out will be a little bit easier if I relock it. Okay, as I pull him out, I'm going to try to hold on to the sidebars. Okay, there we go. Okay, as you can see, here's 
one sidebar in the half moon. Here's the other one. I'll give you close-ups of them in a minute. Let's take the cover plate off. Then we will put the first sidebar and half moon down into the tray. And then I will take out the associated pins. Actually, I think this was, that was five through eight. I accidentally took them out on the wrong side. Okay, and here is one through four. And all our springs. Okay. Let me give you a close up of all of this. Here we can see all of our sliders, each one with one true gate and either two or three false gates. Then we have our two sidebars and two half moons that engage those, those true gates. And we have the body of the lock. It is unmodified as you can see and the faceplate no modifications again that's all I've got for you today these two bar locks are not that hard if you have a little bit of knowledge and you approach them with a good strategy if you have any questions or comments about this video please put them below if you like this video and would like to see more like it please subscribe and as always have a nice day Thank you.